Well, this is my 1951 Champion, Australian delivered, um, right hand drive. I've had it for about 28 to 30 years. Um, I ended up pulling the engine out of it to rectify a popping in the exhaust that it had that annoyed me. Uh, consulted Bill Cathcart, the guru in America, via email. Uh, he suggested it was possibly valve springs. They suffered with weak valve springs in, in those days. So he uh, sent me out new springs, but when I started pulling the engine out to also give it a repaint and do the springs, I found that the valve guides were totally dead. Water in the, in, uh, oil in the inlet ports. So I ordered new, new um, valve guides from America. Um, they had, to, had time to wait for those to arrive, so I, I looked more at what Bill Cathcart did in his photographs on his website of, with these old motors. Saw that he does port and polishing and um, cams, all that sort of stuff, and also makes headers. So I thought, well, I've got a workshop and I've got die grinder, so I thought, bugger, I'll, and that's what I did. I just pulled everything apart. Um, I did a complete port grind out on all the ports, matched the ports of the manifold to the engine ports. Um, I sent the cam away and had a, had a mild grind um, done to it. Um, after consulting with Bill. Um, then I, it was a matter of waiting, so perfecting these headers, which was a, a lot of work, uh, researching what, what bends I could use to, to fabricate them and what electric wel welding electrodes I could use. But all that worked out fine. Um, the, the headers are in and they look good. They look the part. Um, I've got short pieces of pipe on it at the moment so it doesn't, the exhaust doesn't burn all the paint, new paint on the engine. Uh, the engine has gone back together with uh, brand new uh, valve guides, brand new stainless steel valves from Bill, new springs, new cam uh, yeah, valve lifters. Um, so it's it's been a, a real revise, you know. Um, it's a totally different engine now. So, and the the pierce to resistance was finding just by chance an original Frank Morgan alloy head uh, that a friend, an old studio baker member of ours had. Um, he's passed away unfortunately, Rob Smith, um, and I found this head in his, in his garage when I was helping his widow. Now tell me about the significance of that head over its standard head. Well, the alloy head was one of, made by Frank Morgan, was one of many made for the hyper, high compression um, improvements for the engine when they used to imp install those little motors into the speed cars in the 40s and 50s and uh, run them up to 7000 RPM with vastly different cams, but they still used to really, you know, get a, a lot of horsepower out of the little motors. This is startup day. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you're expecting. Well, I hope it's it sounds stronger and feels stronger. It's with the high compression head, a slight cam grind, um, totally recut valve seats, new valves. Um, there has to be some improvement and plus the headers and this, this high compression head, there's got to be, um, I'm really looking forward to feeling what the differences are. Well, I, I fitted um, a transistorized ignition to the, into the distributor of the engine. That was before I did the, the engine rebuild. And this little device, although it improves the, the running of the engine hugely, it is more awkward to find the timing mark for the motor. With the transistorized ignition, that, that doesn't work. Um, and it's a real no. fly by the seat of your pants, turn the distributor a touch, see if it'll start. And, and you've just got to feel, go by feel to try and get the motor to, to find the timing mark to start up properly. fortunate that I've managed to sort out the timing and statically time it so that the timing was correct and it just it burst into life as you, as you heard. It was um, very energetic.
The last bit of advice I took from Bill was to install a complete dual exhaust system from the new exhaust headers that I built. Wow, what a sound. As Bill said, you have never heard a champion sound like it, and he was absolutely right. It fires into life with a presence that it's impossible to ignore. Let's have a listen. Forgetting the brakes, mm. tell me tell me how it felt driving around with your gearbox adjustment, which you can tell me about, what mm. you did there, mm. and how it felt on that first drive around the square. The gearbox seems to be operating properly. Um, I've, I think there's a, I need to do a little bit more, another adjustment on the clutch. It mightn't be disengaging quite enough. It's a little bit stiff in some of the gears, but the gearbox itself we pulled apart, and it's got mostly new gears in it, new cluster, new uh, input shaft, uh, second second reverse gear, second speed gear are all brand new in it, so I suppose it, it, it will be a little bit stiff for a while, but I might, still might be able to, I, I think I've got a touch more, too much freeboard in the clutch pedal, so. Judy Baker, from what I can see, were the innovators of American car design. Um, I, I feel that they, you know, they led the way in many, many areas. They were always winning um, the economy runs in America, uh, which, which you can only do that sort of stuff if you have a well-engineered engine. And I know for a fact that they are, because they've been testing in their engines right back from the early 20s, running, running their engines and cars on. on speedway tracks and doing all sorts of endurance and I said and I also know that like the um, not so much with the, uh, the the sixes but with the the Stude V8 they got you know very large valves in them uh, for better breathing and that's where the, that's the secret of making an engine run better so how many more years is left in the old girl oh it'll outlast me <laughs> there's no doubt about that <laughs> you've never heard a champion until you've heard one with the headers and dual pipe system.